Hello everyone and welcome back to the episode number two of Nested Virtualization. I am Jawad and uh, today we are going to discuss about the KVM architecture and we are also going to install the KVM on the ESXi which we have already installed. The ESXi was already installed in the previous series. If you have not watched it kindly, uh, you can see in the uh, in the video description. Okay, so let's start. Before jumping uh, to the Linux KVM, we want uh, we should know um, what is kernel, um, what is job in is in every operating system there is a kernel. So think uh, the uh, uh, kernel as a boss of your computer operating system. It's like a manager that makes sure that software and hardware are playing nice together. When you click something or run program, the kernel is the one who takes the request and tells the computer hardware, hey man, what, what you should do? It is always there, uh, quietly working in the background, making sure um, that it's running smoothly from the diagram you can see that on the below we have cpu memory and device and kernel is acting as a mediator or uh, the coordinator which is uh, taking the request from the application from the user and it is uh, asking um, that okay do this job to the hardware and the processor or is doing its job the hardware is doing its job so how basically KVM evolved and what makes it Linux hypervisor. Uh, basically, back in days of 2006, Linux was doing a great, um, and uh, but there was the whole virtualization party also happening at the same time, and Linux was uh, kinda on the sidelines. So there was a person, Avi Kiviti, and his team had uh, this uh, light bulb moment um, and they say that what if we could make Linux itself into hypervisor so that's a fancy way of saying that they wanted Linux to be able to run multiple virtual com computers inside it so here the, uh, they come up with the KVM which stands for the kernel based virtual machine uh, just think of it as giving Linux a magic uh, when to create little virtual spaces or computers inside itself. Just the same as we did in the uh, in the VMware world. Uh, and if you see uh, the ESXi even itself is built on the Linux. If you see it code. So each of these spaces uh, things running of its own hardware but actually it's all happening inside one big physical computer the name kvn is pretty on nodes it's all about virtual machine that uh, run and we should be thankful to the linux kernel the core part of the linux what is the magic of the kvm it comes uh, from how it works from the existing feature of the linux kernel so basically it's add-on on this kernel uh, which is uh, like handling memory and managing process but it also juggle these virtual computers on top of it uh, the other applications it also uh, are helping uh, for the com virtual computers and it's uh, from how it's doing it's getting a help from the modern processors from intel and md amd which are built in uh, with the uh, with the virtualization in mind the old cpus cannot do that but the new piece, uh, uh, the cpus uh, can help those virtualization task which will be given by the kvm uh, so by 2017 kvm became an official part of linux uh, and the starting version was uh, 2.6 this was huge because it meant anyone with the Linux system could basically potentially dive into the virtualization, right? 
making uh, Linux and uh, 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 what do you say more cooler playground for the technical people's people. It was like Linux went from being just an operating system from just normal operating system to a more uh, powerful ha house that could run multiple uh, isolated operating system which we call it VMs on the same hardware. So KVM um, didn't just make Linux better. Um, it revolutionized the whole thing by, about running and managing the multiple operating systems. So when we uh, talk about KVM and the Linux kernel is basically acting as a hypervisor. And uh, it's really a game changer. So this is how, what is KVM and how it evolves. Okay, you can see from the core components, we have three layers. The first layer is hardware. The second layer is the kernel space, where we are running the main kernel driver and the specific KVM kernel modules or drivers, you can say. And top of it, we are running K KMO and KMO KVM. And on top of it, we have management tool, which is known as LiveWord. This is the layer three and is also called the user space. So let's, uh, hardware can be anything. So let's jump into the kernel modules. What are these kernel modules? As we discussed, Linux kernel is like a core of the operating system, right? It's a brain that manage everything from memory and how software communicates with the hardware. Now this brain can learn new tricks. Just you, you see, this was the old brain. Now it has more capability. It adds uh, without doing any surgery. You are you do not do any surgery. You just add up, and um, and what happens? You add the, those modules. And what those modules are like a plug and play skills or feature that you can add or remove from the Linux kernel without having to reboot the system. These modules add support to the new hardware to this new hardware. Hardware and file system, in our case, uh, uh, virtualization capabilities. It is a way to extend the functionality of the kernel on the fly, making it more versatile. So you see, this is uh, the beauty of these kernel modules. Okay, what is this KVM Co and KVM Intel in AMD Co? KVM Co is the foundational kernel module for the the kernel based virtual machine virtualization uh, what you you can think of the base layer of the core component that introduce the uh, the ability of linux to act as a hypervisor okay you can say it's a parent and a hypervisor is a platform uh, you know already that it's running multiple virtual machine and uh, when you load the uh, the kvm.co into the linux kernel you are basically Telling the kernel, hey man, you have uh, got the basic tool to create and manage virtual machines. This module is equipped uh, the kernel with the necessary mechanism to allocate the resources for the VMs and manage uh, their execution and keep them contained, ensuring that uh, there is no interference between each of the VM. So this is the foundation, as I told you, it's like a parent. Um, and then we have uh, KVM uh, per, uh, as per the vendor specific modules. If you are running Intel, you will find the uh, KVM Intel um, co kernel file. Uh, if you're running AMD, you will find the AMD.co. What it is doing? It says it basically set the stage for virtualization. Uh, no, sorry, KVM Co basically sets the stage of the virtualization. But actually what's happening is do not, it's not optimizing the process of specific hardware that you might be using. Okay, as I told you you, you, you can be using any hardware. So that optimization was not done by the parent uh, kernel file uh, module, sorry, which is kvm.co. So uh, what's this kernel uh, Intel, uh, kvm that Intel co comes into the play and it's uh, these are the processor specific modules designed to work with Intel and AMD 
CPUs respectively. Uh, you can see it's tailored for Intel processor. This takes advantage of Intel virtualization technology, which is known as VTX. You you can see in the when you are doing in the in the BIOS, you have to enable this feature. But nowadays it's automatically enabled. You do not have to go manually and enable it. By default, it's coming with the enabled feature in the BIOS. So what VTX allow for better performance and security, supporting features like hardware assisted paging is helping us. This means when you run a VM, you can run more efficiently getting closer to the native performance because the modules help the kernel better communicate and utilize the Intel uh, CPU features. Similarly, it will happen also in the AMD. So in summary, you can say KVM Core gives the Linux kernel virtualization superpower and making it possible to run multiple VMs. Then depending on your CPU, loading either KVM Intel or KVM AMD, optimize these virtual capabilities to work more, uh, you say, effect, uh, efficiently with the specific features and technology uh, available on Intel and AMD processor. This combination of uh, module makes sure that the kernel cannot only support virtualization, but in an optimized way and uh, for your hardware, providing better performance and more secure environment for the VMs. So, hope this is clear for the kernel space. Now we discuss the Kimu and Kimu KVM. What's uh, it's running in the where your basically applications reside. Okay, so imagine user space as a vibrant city. How you can think of this user space as a vibrant city where your all applications hangs out and work. Okay, and separate from more secure and restricted area, which is kernel, it is more restricted area, right? And that's where the kernel of the opening systems Right, the separation uh, we make a separation so that uh, it's kind of like having a residential area is a residential area and the high security, uh, like a government facility, you can say a kernel space. That's why we divide into a layers, okay? So, have a more better control and separation. So, application in the user space cannot ab ability access or interfere into the kernel space without proper checks. This setups keep them safe and stable, uh, making sure that they do not uh, misbehave, uh, does not cause the problem to the brain of our uh, system. So that's why I mean distinguish in, in the layers. So what what this chemo uh, is, uh, is doing in this user space? It's a software emulator that can simulate a complete machine in the software allowing you to run an operating system design uh, for one type of CPU or another. However, uh, relying on um, is not good because Kimo is like a uh, ultimate virtual, uh, okay, think as a layman term, is like you are basically ultimate, it's a virtual tour guide in your city of technology. It is a skill showing people around not just one city can simulate entire world. In our world, it's VM inside your own physical system. Whether you want to see what life is like, completely different architecture or system. However, uh, relying on uh, software emulation, chemo performances can be limited because every instruction executed by the VM needs to be translated into something whole CPU can. Uh, can understand. So it's uh, not good for the performance wise actually. What actually brings the this chemo with the K, uh, KVM is basically integrating, you are integrating the chemo feature with the KVM and it's uh, transform the uh, what you call emulator into a powerful virtualize, uh, virtualizer. This com uh, combination basically helps uh, the VMs to execute codes directly to the hardware. So this uh, VM running 
on top of it will think that it's directly running it's, it's sending the instruction directly to the uh, to the hardware so you are in the fast lane this setup is uh, is really uh, helping in uh, making good performance lastly you have the management tool on top of it you can see this is an open source api toolkit uh, and daemon which extract the unity um, and management of uh, visual uh, sorry virtual machines across various virtualization technologies okay it's an interface basically it's an interface which will, will give you uh, the way of uh, that how to define or how to start the vm how to stop the vm or how to migrate the vm this is the help with the help of the while in the vmware uh, esxi we were doing all with the help of the browser you can think uh, libworld as a ultimate uh, party planner is a layman term what uh, what will happen on top of our uh, virtualization party setup we have got a libworld the party planner it's like a friendly neighborhood organization organizer who is uh, uh, who exactly uh, how to throw a fantastic virtual machine without you uh, without you to need to know all the nitty gritty details of the party planning okay so if you take a uh, libworld technically speaking libworld basically is simplifying the vm management you have many uh, tools like you have which which is cli we will be discussing and uh, you have word manager if you are using the uh, the uh, the gui so how you hope it's uh, clear the core components and now let's see how it's uh, those components are interacting with each other here is the happy user you can see uh, as the as the base of the diagram and on the bottom you can see the hardware this is the physical uh, foundation of the computer system which include the hardware processor and other components and on top of it you have the kvm layer kernel and again you have kmo kvm on which you are running um uh, running a vms and from the happy user what will you will be using these command uh, which is uh, installed when you install the love world uh, love world it's a toolkit you can say it's a toolkit and you you are going to for example if you want to um, define a vm or create you can use the which cli uh, and you can do also create the vm with the help of the which install but we will use this example if you are using uh, GUI, then you will go to the Word Manager. With the help of the Word Viewer, you can see the you can connect to the VM, and you can uh, analyze and do the operation, uh, perform any operation you like to do on the VM. So what will happen actually? It will make an API call to the Kimo or the KVM using a Lib Lib Word. Okay. And that call will be going to the KVM, and then it will go to the kernel, and the and uh, finally it will be executed on the hardware. Okay, you can think as a multi-story building. All of this thing on the ground floor, you have the hardware, which is the founding uh, foundation of the building, and on the first floor, which is like a power system, you can say, of the building that allows the uh, allows it to supply the electricity. To lot of departments here are the departments uh, and in our case it's a virtual machine and the second floor which is the uh, the chemo chemo list is an interior designer who makes sure that each uh, apartment have the right furniture in the vm it is making sure okay this hardware is correct or not what is the memory what is the uh what you say uh, what is the cpu setting so this is all it is done by the this second floor guy then you have the libworld on the top right 
think as a building manager which is sitting on the lobby and it's helping the users hey man if you want to uh, manage without worrying about the electricity you don't need to know all those details okay you don't um, need to uh, mess up with the power system all right so that's all is done by this uh, lib work okay this uh, basically setup allows to live comfortably in their virtual apartment making changes as they wish through the uh, this building manager okay without even uh, touching the complex systems which is here chemo kvm and kvm kernel i hope uh, it's clear okay so let's start the installation of the kvm first of all we need to upload the red hat or uh, iso file on the data store uh, but in my case actually it's already there on the data store it's already there so i will not i will just uh, go and create the vm i will go in the new virtual machine next i will give the name vm host will be under this and then I will select the data store which where I want to save this VM I have only one data store then I will select seven or later I will select Linux I have uploaded 8.8 .8 version so that's why I'm giving this one now here is the options coming I will give the CPU like 8. You can see here I have only one socket, so I will give one socket. This is the main thing hardware virtualization. Expose hardware assisted virtualization to the guest operating system. What will it will enable the nested virtualization? So, with this help, the next VM, the KVM which we are installing. In the ESXi will also act as hypervisor. So the VMs which will be created in the KVM, which will reside in the KV um, um, in the KVM, they will think that my hypervisor, their sorry, their hypervisor is KVM. They will not think that the, their hypervisor is uh, VS, uh, ESXi. So they will interact directly with that one, and and they will assume that we have this. Uh, hypervisor i will give 84 gb ram and i will also enable iom mmu uh, terabyte 1.83 is fine 84 is fine for me okay rest is okay here is the network I will add two networks here for this VM. Remember this, uh, okay, let me add it, then I will tell you what I meant to say. Add device. Network adapter. So this is the beauty which I was discussing in the previous video. I think it's not added or what happened? No, it's already added. Okay, so I will browse, I will give it to data, which is the D switch port. Okay, now you can see two, two ports are there. What I mean is to say, we come back here. Now, this is the hypervisor we are going to install. We are setting up here. This is ESXi is already running, right? And we are on the, we are managing this hypervisor via what? V center. We are logging to this V center and we are creating two uh, virtual NIC ports. Here you see two hypervisor. We are creating these two ports which will be mapped to the port group. But here is little bit change. Here you see is one D switch. But in my case, it's little bit different. One is VM network, which is by default. As I told you in the previous videos, 
that the, uh, this VM network is created by when you are installing the ESXi. Uh, and with the ESXi, the default uh, switch comes what? It is vSwitch. And inside the vSwitch, there is a network automatically created which is known as VM network, which is for the VM communication. All right. So this is, uh, so I am using one of that network. I can migrate that port group to the V center D switch, but I have not migrated. So I will still use this one. Okay. And this data group is another port which is created where in this D switch. This is the data port group. And this is the on the left side, you can say it is the VM port group, which is going to the ESXi and other switch. You can let's say assume here is another switch which is called V switch and it has port group here, which is known as, uh, which is known as VM network. Okay. So that will, and as I told you before, that one has uplinks, which is assigned map to the external world. But in our case, these switch do not have any uplink map to the NSI only. It has, uh, uplink to the V switch, uh, uh, which is uh, VM network and the VM network is connected to the V switch and V switch has the external port. If it is still not clear, no problem. We will discuss in the uh, next video when we are discussing about the bridges and I will make more detailed topology of those uh, and I see. So just capture this and this is a high level diagram. Just see here we are creating two ports here. Just click next, it gives you the summary. Finish. VM host. Play. Nothing, simple. All wizard. I, you can also use this one. I have already installed, but I will use this time. Web console. Ah, sorry, I forgot. Uh, let me power off. I know why it's not booting. It's not booting because I did not give from where to pick the operating system. From where the I did not give the source. So I will give the source that I file. This one, double click software. I have already uploaded. If you have not uploaded, you can upload. As per your left. Connect on power on. Okay. Now I will power on. Stall Reddit. It's loading the installer. Once the installer is loaded, it will pop up the window. The wizard basically, the installation wizard will be opened. I will keep continue. I will give the destination. You can choose automatic, but I will choose custom. Done. And now I will click plus because I will create manual partition. And here is the description. First, I will create the boot. 1 GB is sufficient. That is fine. Next is the boot API. It is for the UEFI systems to have the boot loader. Flash UEFI one GIP. Yeah. 
uh, I will create swap first. I will give 4 GB. Usually, if your RAM is uh, 8 GB, you will allocate 16 GB. But my memory is too much, so I will just 4 GB is sufficient for me. Automatically detect swap system. Swap space is used when your system runs out of the physical memory. That's why that's why I told you that if your memory is less, so you have the general rule of thumb is that you double its memory and you make it 8 GB. But already I have so much memory, so I do not it's not going to be used actually. So slash root. How much I should give? 50 GB. Okay. You can change as per your requirement. Okay. I, I am just calculate for my own. And I will select this one LVM thin provisioning. Update setting. And then plus. What next is var 70 GIB. At point, I will again select this one and I will collect uh, to this one. What is var is op uh, store operational data in your var, okay? Home, uh, and then you click. I am only one user, so I it's not it's too much for me. Also, this if you have multiple users, then you can change according to your need temp is fine 30 gb and then is the var lib uh, images you actually um, it's the default equation where the libvolt is uh, reading it it, um, it knows that it inventory is where basically it's tracking all the vms with the help of some kind of inventory so what that inventory is basically it's a libvolt pool that pool setting can be changed once the installation is done but here i am just going to use the libvolt default location uh, of its pool which is slash war lib and lib word images and i will give the maximum space whatever available to me spelling is correct x1 t i b Okay, so all is done. Twenty three GB LVM. I believe is all good to go. I can click done and uh, accept. Now I need to s no not this one. Sorry, where it was. Software selection. I will not select, I will select the basic install. It's done. Go to network. I will give the on figures at 92, 4.200. You see, I am giving this one of the IP which is connected to the port group, and that port group is basically the VM network, and that VM network is connected to this external network. Okay, I 
my own power to IP save done because I have uh, configured very easy password so I need to click two times uh, root done Okay, I will change this to yes. Everything looks fine. There is no need for this one. It should be static. This is no need for all this. I will give also DNS2. I am just configuring right now the basic IP because later on, um, so I can easily connect right now with the secure CRT easily. Should be network manager. Oh, it's restarted. Let's check the service. It should be pingable now. Yes, now I can access it remotely. Secure CRT. And then I will go to this one. And I will give the password. And where we are. Okay, now we will check the KV modules. We will discuss already this one about that it is uh, uh, VTX is supported or not. So we will give this command ls lscpu and you can see here vtx is already enabled so it's uh, there is no issue in the hardware and ls mode we we can uh, confirm that it is the the kernel modules are loaded or not the one which we discussed previously okay. Uh, KVM. So you can see one means it's already loaded. Zero for the KVM Intel it's fine because it's still it's it's fine. It's not in use. No VM is yet created. So that's the reason. So what is the next step? Now we want to mount the uh, the DVD so we can install the packages because we no want to install the 
you can you can see the sro let's go back it is connected or not action edit settings it's not connected it should be connected all right and now uh, what we there's the next command it is you can grab it uh, from this but i can see actually already here but for All right, it is there. CD-ROM is already there. So what I will do, I will create the directory mkdir slash mnt CD-ROM, and what I want to mount slash dve dv. What is the name? SR zero. It can be different. SR zero and then dev. CD ROM. So now it is mapped to this. Oh, I'm sorry. It is MNT. And now I can see LS MNT slash CD ROM. Yeah. So I can see the the directory. What is the next steps I have done till here? Uh, we can see already the contents so those are five steps are all covered this was also covered in my previous series now to make it permanent this is optional you can change the s step file which is the mapping table uh, file system uh, information of all the partition and data storage devices stored there I will add here. DVSR zero R zero slash oh. ISO nine six six. This mean is the CD-ROM. Okay, and what is the option? It's read only and auto dump value and this one value is zero because this is the read only. We can also check it. So there is no error, it means everything is fine. Once it is booted, I do not need to always mount again and again. So it will be keep mounted. That is the beauty. Now I will create this repository. What should I give the name? Local dash repo dot repo should be local ISO I will give local iso but repo should be always there whatever name you choose it's okay but repo dot repo should be there and i will copy from my here this is the requirement for the 8 version all there this shown but i will make it still clean just for the safe side okay i know it's not registered yeah make cache okay so the cache is built now the last step would be to install the libworld you see I, we are going to solve these three main tools qma uh, kvm libworld and word install word install we will not use it but we are just following to show you that this are also one of the main components of the because our main work will be with the wish uh, sorry for that
Okay, stall system CTM status. Start and enable. All right. CTM. Sorry. Now it's running. So this one is already stalled. Where were we? Okay. So all these are we already discussed all these detail. What is QMVM? What is lip word? What is word stall? So you can see uh, like if I do the command, this is the CLI. Remember the happy user? If you don't remember, I will recall you where it is. Here is the happy user. Or uh, don't be sad. Uh, so this happy user is not going to give the command which list minus all and I can see there is no VM created nothing is there I can define I can modify I can start I can make different option with this help of the CLI here I am using the CLI okay you will also see the VNC weaver I am not using this one and I am not using this one. Okay. So, what else? This is all finished. Let's disable the firewall. WCTL. Disable firewall D because it will create problem. And I believe till now is fine. We will continue in our next video. What we'll do, I will share the topology and we'll discuss the bridges. And after that, once we discuss the bridges, we will create bridges interfaces because right now there is no interface configuration. Uh, remember this diagram? I, I just create one uh, ENS 192, this port. I did not create any bridges which will be required for these VMs. Okay. So in the next video, I, I, we will discuss about the bridges configuration. And we will discuss how this flow. Once the bridges are created, then we will uh, create the Eve uh, ENG. We will install the Eve ENG, and then we will install also later on the controller, uh, uh, which will be a router in the hypervisor. And also we will install the runner machine, which will be used for the CI/CD uh, CD, uh, pipeline to deploy the configuration. Um, onto the uh, routers i hope you like this video and enjoy it see you in the next video goodbye